Hey, you uh, wonderful uh, do-it-yourselfers and the M12 to M13, I think, owners for the Mercedes uh, engine. In any case, uh, I'm going to jump right to it and uh, I already dismantled the, uh, the valve check valves and uh, cleaned them as well. Uh, you'll notice that one side will be more dirty than the other but uh, just be careful when you clean it try not to put solvents down the uh, check valve neck and then you should be okay uh, you're going to get some debris some dust but uh, I figured that's going to be naturally there during the life of this car in any case but uh, just to be safe go ahead and uh, crank the engine without starting it a couple of times just to help dissipate the, the dust or debris throughout the uh, exhaust manifold. Okay, so here it goes. The tool I made is this nickel-plated um, steel cable that I used or salvaged from uh, my uh, leftover uh, cable job for my Porsche 911. The levers the heater levers so what i did was i put a 45 degree curved bend at the tip about the same circumference as a uh, dime 10 cent piece usd and then if you see i also modified a little bit at the middle of it about six and a half inches down i put a little notch to let me know if I've uh, hit the end of the, uh, the tunnel, basically. And then I put a little uh, handle here so that I could uh, you know, turn it easily without having to damage the wire. Now, you'll notice that the top of the va check valves are very different. Well, a little different. The nipple of the vacuum line is positioned in different places. But the uh, reed valve or the reed, uh, I guess, uh, flaps are identical and they were very dirty. This is a clean state, as well as the bottom half of the check valves. The driver's side was a little bit dirty, but actually this was the cleanest side. But the passenger side was the worst. This was filthy, filled up with carbon deposits. And my first attempt, I had a half inch ball of carbon literally rolling around inside. And I assume plugging that hole just for fun. <laughs> okay, anyways, uh, that's about it. Uh, these screws are the uh, JIS screws or Japanese industrial standard screws. And uh, according to Google, they're about the same size as the Phillips number two Phillips head. Okay, so I verified it and it is true. Okay, you do need some leverage when you take these off, but um, caution, please don't use any Phillips. Just use the proper size Phillips for these screws and then just put uh, a lot of leverage on the first opening and then you'll notice. Okay, and then I use this hose to blow through these ports. If, I, if you cannot blow through it, it's still clogged. So, or if it, there's any resistance, continue to use the clean out tool, okay? And then if these reed flaps are stuck, um, I recommend throw some WD-40 around the rubber pieces to help loosen the carbon and then use this pick tool and gently go through the reed flaps and then um, put it on the body of the uh, assembly and lift gently without trying to rip these rubber seals. And of course, this trusty old magnet to pick up these screws so you don't lose them, okay? All right, here we go. So paper towel so we can clean the tip and positioning.
camera so you can see how it goes in. All right, so again, here's the tool and the curved bend, or the curved tip, I'm sorry. And then about six and a half inches, a little notch to just help you guide how far you're going into the tunnel, okay? So I start off with the tip facing down, okay? And then as you pass that first angle, then you'll turn it up, up and around until you could get through the crevices properly. So here we go. Coming in with this tip down, I'm gonna pass through the first passage or 90 degree passage. There you go. Went in as I was twisting and you can see the notch right here and it'll indicate which direction you're facing, okay? Still, the tip is still facing down. I'm slowly going in as I kinda just snake it through. Going to the side, there we go. Another angle it slipped into. And then you just pass it further in and then just play around with it gently. Don't wanna break anything, especially this rod, okay? So be gentle with it and then put, again, another passage or another angle that it passed. Now I'm pushing it in, almost there. And that's pretty much all the way through, as you can see by the indicator. So you push a little bit further just to make sure, just run it, run or just turn the rod inside gently. And you could hear that it is uh, hitting the tunnel or at the angle. At this point on the M112, this rod has passed all the way through the exhaust manifold. Okay, And then now based on the indicator, the tip is facing up. So to prove that, I want to go ahead and pull it out and show you. The tip is facing up. So again, I start with the tip facing down, twisting and twisting and pushing slightly. And then at the end, it faces up and I pull out. And if you can see the tip, I don't know if you can see that, it has a little bit of carbon. Prior to this, I was pulling a lot of carbon out and then just using the napkin to wipe it off. And this is the result, okay? It's not much, but every little bit helps. Now take your hose it's, it's pretty much a 3 8 inch leftover hose with a vacuum line stuck into it and i basically put it over the opening and use my breath to blow through no restrictions okay and that's it all right so uh that's pretty much it if you have any questions, feel free to comment or uh, go on the Ben's World uh, forum or the Peach Parts forum, and you can find me there as well. Okay, good luck everybody, and hope this helps somebody with an M112 or M113 engine. Thanks.